Hey YouTube, thought I would uh, just take a few minutes and finally just sort of spew out at you guys my opinion about the whole WikiLeaks thing and all that. It's been going on for quite some time. Uh, you probably could guess my position if you've watched past videos on things like personal freedom and whatnot, but you know, gotta say it anyway. Uh, but just to start off, if anybody really hasn't been following the WikiLeaks thing, you've been living under a rock or whatever, and you just don't really know all the details of what's going on, there's a really good documentary that just came out called Wiki Rebels, and I'll link to it uh, down in the thing there. It's about an hour long, and it's pretty neutral. It just sort of gives the history of what WikiLeaks has been up to and, and keeps it very neutral. It's not sort of really for WikiLeaks or anti-WikiLeaks. It's just kind of what the what the deal is. So it's it's very interesting stuff. And this video is just going to kind of skip around because there's kind of some main arguments that people have been making about WikiLeaks that I want to try to touch on really quick. And I don't really have a particular order, so I'm just going to be jumping around. But whatever. So first off, uh, Julian Assange, the sort of main public face of WikiLeaks right now. Uh, I really couldn't care less what's going on with him, with the, the legal trouble and all that. It has nothing to do with what WikiLeaks has been doing. Uh, he could be an awesome person and the charges currently against him could be completely made up and whatever and that'd be great. Or he could be a baby-eating psychopath and it wouldn't change my opinion about the WikiLeaks situation, so I just don't consider it relevant at all, so I'm just going to skip all that nonsense altogether. So talking about the leaks, though, uh, I think they're good. Uh, about 99.9% .9 of the time, I think they're awesome. There's a very small fraction of them that have a potential to cause, uh, you know, cause people to be put into danger, and there's a little bit of sort of fuzziness around exactly how you'd figure out what that danger would be. And so I can't sort of be a hundred percent behind it all the time, but they are, or they at least seem to from what I can tell, doing quite a bit to try to minimize the risk of of people, you know, in these foreign countries or in the US or, or wherever that may be put at risk because of some of these leaks. The 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 people at WikiLeaks are, you know, trying to really get their their facts straight, get everything going. They're trying to get help from major news organizations and even the U.S. government to try to figure out specific details about current operations and things that some of the leaks talk about that are likely to put people in danger or, you know, risk serious negative consequences to people that they don't consider should be at risk of serious negative consequences. Some of them, of course, should be, which is why the leaks exist in the first place. Um, and also, most of the leaks really seem to be of a nature that should not have been classified in any sort in the first place. So it just seems kind of silly to argue about it. And, you know, it's basically, I mean, not exact examples, but it might as well be people's lunch orders from business meetings. You know, it's just not relevant. No one should care. I mean, I'm not saying it shouldn't be classified because people would like to read it. It's just who gives a crap. It doesn't have any effect on anything. It doesn't matter to anyone. There's really no reason to have it as classified information. But there are, of course, tidbits that you know, the U.S. government would have liked to stay classified, things that are just embarrassing to senators or other government officials, or sort of evidence of hypocrisy or wrongdoing on the part of certain government officials or governments in general, uh, interactions between the U.S. government and foreign governments that they would prefer to keep secret for whatever reasons, and all kinds of things. But all of those I don't really consider good reasons for making documents classified. And it would seem like the U.S. government was trying to portray those same feelings of trying to get openness and transparency and accountability uh, sort of more and more as a major government initiative 
to the point where on the first day, or maybe the second, the first full day that Barack Obama was president of the United States, he put out a memorandum called, and I want to get this right here, the Memorandum for Transparency and Open Government, which you can read uh, for yourself. I'll link it down to the thing. Basically just says that it, it's a memorandum putting a time limit on creating a, a initiative of some fashion to figure out how we can have a more open, more transparent, more accountable government that the, the public can get more involved in directly with what's going on and really dig down deep into the information and you know, try to sort of push openness and accountability as much as possible. And what came out of that, a little a few months later, or whatever, I think it was 120 days, they had to develop this, uh, this program, whatever you want to call it. And what came out of it was called the Open Government Initiative. Another link down there. Which just sort of starts the planning stages of, of pushing those ideas of openness and accountability and all that. And that just had its one year anniversary three days ago now, four days ago, within the last week or so. But it seems that those things are counter to a lot of the things that U.S. officials and even Barack Obama has been saying about the sorts of things that WikiLeaks and other people sort of forcing that openness and transparency on the government are doing. And uh, an example of that would be the EFF just recently put out an article about Freedom of Information Act requests that they've been doing. The same requests for the same documents uh, several times just to see what kind of differences there would be in the actual information that was redacted from the FBI. And there were a lot of differences, and in some cases, more recent requests actually had more things redacted, or specific things relating to trying to avoid having particular members of the FBI and other government officials being responsible for, for wrongdoings and things like that and just really seems counter to this open government initiative that Barack Obama was trying to push. Anyway, I don't know what the uh, the current status of it is, but it's certainly, you know, it's there, it's up on the White House site, you can just go check it out and see what they're doing. But it's very sort of incongruent behavior, and it's very strange. And, and I guess the, the difference would be they, or they would consider an important difference, would be that on one side they're controlling what becomes open and transparent and that kind of doesn't fit the definition of transparent in a lot of ways but that's kind of where they were aiming with the open government initiative by the looks of things whereas WikiLeaks and, and other such things it's, it's having transparency thrust upon them to a degree that they are not comfortable with or in a time frame that they are not comfortable with and that really shows a disconnect, I guess, and I, I would call that very disingenuous to sort of scream, yeah, we want to be more transparent, we want to set up this specific, you know, section of the government in this committee, this whatever, that, that's going to push for transparency and accountability, and at the same time, you know, trying to stop WikiLeaks from forcing that transparency on them when they don't want it. Which, in my mind, means that even if it turns out that a lot of the things coming out of WikiLeaks are kind of pointless, and a lot of it is, some of it isn't, and some of it is just downright fucked up, but it's a good thing, I think, to to get that information out there and force that openness and transparency and accountability on the government and not just the US government I, I hope that you know more governments end up sort of cracking open the door to transparency not necessarily because of you know fear of things like WikiLeaks and uh, wanting to avoid a backlash of future leaks so they just become a little more transparent in the first place but also just 
because it's it's cheaper to maintain, frankly, uh, when you don't have to deal with classified documents and you know storing information and in different levels of security and and all kinds of stuff, it actually becomes cheaper to manage the information flowing through the government, and it's easier to account for discrepancies. Uh, you can sort of crowdsource a lot of the information gathering and statistical analysis. Uh, just There's a lot of really good benefits to a serious amount of transparency in, in something that deals with so much information as the government that it, it's a benefit just on its own regardless of all of the, the sort of truth-finding issues that are also a very good thing in my opinion. Some in the government might disagree. But yeah, it's just sort of all around better, in my opinion, to be open in the first place. If if the government didn't hide, you know, issues of accountability behind, you know, redacted information and documents, then things like WikiLeaks wouldn't exist in the first place. There would be no need for them. And the fact that the government is sort of railing against them so hard is kind of a negative thing to me not only because I think the information should be out there but it actually shows the government itself as not being for things like openness and accountability at least to the degree that they are trying to portray in everything they do other than fighting against things like WikiLeaks. So it's just a very very hypocritical sort of stance of government officials to take when they are on one hand pushing for openness and accountability and on the other hand trying to force people that are thrusting that openness and accountability on them to be shut down. Uh, there's also other issues, things like the, the retaliations that uh, you know the, the anonymous group and other people on the internet have been doing denial of service attacks to Visa and MasterCard, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, a PayPal, because of their withdrawing from sort of supporting WikiLeaks by proxy by letting them use their services. And I think that that is actually, th those attacks, that retaliation is actually counter to what I would think that the principle of WikiLeaks is about, seeing those, those are private companies and they can basically serve whoever they want and deny service to whoever they want. Um, and I think it's bad, and I, I try to minimize my use of services that I don't agree with their their philosophy, their methodology, methodology, I should say. Uh, and just, uh, you know, if they do something I would disagree with, I try to avoid using that product or service or whatever but I would not condone actually attacking them because they do have the right to deny service to whoever they want. You don't have the right to use a private service if they don't want you to. That just doesn't exist. That's a very, very different situation than having documents that should, in my opinion at least, and in lots of people's opinions, be open to the public in the first place that are government documents that you know, public funding, tax money is paying for the the running of the government be hidden from that same public. That's a very different situation. So I, I would definitely not condone such retaliation on private companies. I do think that uh, you know boycotts and things like that are, are great. Uh, you got to hit them where the money is. But actually committing crimes against them and trying to stop them from having the right to serve who they want to serve is very, very counter to the, the openness and accountability that I would say that the, the sort of concept of WikiLeaks is about, even if it turns out that some of the people at WikiLeaks are total assets with their own agenda, which very well could be. And the, the Wiki Rebels documentary actually gets in a little bit near the end to some infighting between people working at WikiLeaks and some of them have actually split off and started their own open leaks 
thing, which I, I'm not sure if it's actually started yet, but it should be soon. So there, I mean, there's all kinds of drama going on there. But the, the actual leaks itself, I think, is the important thing. And I, I think they're definitely a good thing. I haven't seen any evidence so far that uh, sort of supports any of the arguments that it's putting a lot of people in danger or anything like that. But even if that were the case, it would have to be quite a bit of danger to overcome the positive effect of getting the the corruption, the hypocrisy, and the, the downright just creepy stuff that's coming out of some of these leaks, uh, both the, the Afghan war logs and now the, the cable gate, you know, um, that's still very much in the early stages of being released very, very slowly. So it's hard to say what kind of uh, stuff will come out of that in the future. But for now, I'm definitely in WikiLeaks corner, and uh, I hope they uh, they keep going strong. I actually am working on putting a mirror up probably at some point. Uh, I'm just not sure about the details of where I want to, to do that and all that. But, uh, yeah, it's good stuff. WikiLeaks, yes. Um, government hypocrisy, no. And that would be my opinion. I'll see you later.